G'day. In this final video of this series, um, we uh, will be plotting um, our response probabilities from our psychometric function model that we've created. What we've done up until now is we've learned how to take samples from a uniform distribution. We've learned how to create a Gaussian cumulative distribution function. And we've learned how to basically use our uniform distribution samples um, to try and recreate or, or to, to model um, our uh, cumulative distribution function, our Gaussian cumulative distribution function, using very simple psychometric um, uh, protocol. It's called method of constant stimuli. And we've also learned how to calculate proportion correct, because what we want to do in this video is plot. Okay, we want to plot the mathematical model, and we want to plot our, uh, our experimental model data to see how well they, align, they line up. So if you haven't seen those previous videos, I really do suggest you go back to the start and work your way through. One of the videos is a little bit tricky where we do all this sort of conditional probability and stuff, but hopefully if you stick with it, it should hopefully make sense. What we're doing in this video is we're basically just going to tie up a lot of loose ends and do some plotting of our data. So uh, let's put a comment here. Now we want to convert um, our data into proportion, proportion correct. Okay, and so since we've got that there, we can now essentially start plotting our data. So we won't create a function for this. We can probably just do this on the fly right at the end. So uh, let's just create a plot. So plot dot plot. Okay, we won't create any figures or axes here. But let's have a think. What we want to do is we want to plot essentially two psychometric functions. The first psychometric function is our Gaussian cumulative distribution function, which was the model, okay, which was the mathematically derived model that we created. So um, remember, we created that here, back up here, when we generated and returned our model parameters. And so we can just basically take the x value here from stim x. So stim x, remember, that's the intensities from 0 to 100. And we've got the model probability here, so model uh, prob here. So that's our y values is going to be the probability of our model. And we'll make the color here uh, black, so K. And we'll make the marker equals, we'll make it X's. And we'll make um, the line width equals 2. Okay, and then what we're going to do is going to make the X limit between 0 and 100, 100 not 199. And we'll make the y limit, okay, we'll make this between 0 and 1.2. Now, the reason why we're going to make it 1.2, although it's a cumulative cumulative distribution function is, um, we just want to see if anything funky is going on with our, with our um, simulation data, okay? Shouldn't be, but we'll just, we'll just see what happens. And then what we'll do is we'll plot um, dot x label, this will be, um, so the x-axis title will be stimulus intensity, and you always put units on your x and y-axis, and AU stands for arbitrary units. We've just come up with these units. We haven't, it's, you know, it's not degrees, or it's not, you know, uh, decibels or anything like that. And the plot.y label is going to be uh, proportion correct, okay? So proportion, proportion correct, okay? And this will be just PR. And so if we plot dot show this, if we show this plot, we should see quite nicely our figure come up with the x axis going between 0 and 100 and our y axis going, okay, between 0 and 1. And we see that there quite nicely. Uh, actually, I've changed my mind. We probably don't need this to go up to 1.2. We can probably leave it at 1. So we'll go back to here. So just say between 0 and 1. Okay, it's a black, it's a black curve, and it and it follows you know the shape of the function that that we had before. <laughs> I'm gonna change my mind again. I want to see this top these top values here. So we'll go back up. So we'll just say 1.0, uh, 0, 0.5. We'll just see how it looks. I'm going to be quite pit, uh, picnicking, uh, nitpicking here. Yep, okay, so that looks okay. But to make sure that we know that we should stop at 1.0, we'll put a horizontal line in. So to put a horizontal line in our figures using matplotlib, we go plot dot um, 
AX horizontal line and we want it at uh, 1.0 or at 1 and we want the color to be uh, gray and we want the line style to be um, say dashed and we want the line width to be say 0 0.5 like we don't want it to be overwhelming but this should give us a, uh, a horizontal line at uh, 1.0 Okay, so you can see that horizontal lines appearing there now. You can see that there. Okay, so this is our model. Now what we want to do is we want to plot. Okay, we don't need this much anymore. Now we want to add to this plot our, ex our model data, our experimental data. Where is that? Well, that's going to be locked up in this proportion correct. So plot dot plot. We're going to add another plot to this. It's the same stim x values, okay? Because remember, that's what we've run our stimulus experiment on. The same values. But now we want to plot proportion correct. This is derived from our experiment. And we'll make the color say red. And we'll make the marker the same x. And we'll make the line width 2 as well. So now, hopefully, what we should see is... Um, some ability... Or not, we don't see some ability. We'll see how well our mathematical model relates or corresponds to our experimental model I think I said that around the wrong way how our experimental model you know maps to our Gaussian cumulative distribution function so here we go the black here is our mathematical model okay and the red is the experimental data we can see um, at 0 10 20 30 our subject got all of these trials wrong Okay, but then you see at uh, what's that 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, they got them all correct. Okay, and we've got this bit in the middle where they got some wrong and some correct. Okay, and so you, you'll ask yourself, hey, that actually models it pretty well, doesn't it? Let's go back, let's quit out of that, let's change the numbers of trials from 10 because we've only got. 10 trials at each stimulus so they've only got a you know a certain number of chances to really get them correct or incorrect if we make that say a hundred trials per stimulus okay we're going to get an error so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the numbers of samples that we've got from our sample space instead of a thousand we're going to say ten thousand okay that will give us plenty of, of backup okay and so if we now have a thousand trials Per sample, uh, per stimulus intensity, we should see that our models start to become really quite closely, um, you know, they, 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 they overlap quite closely there. Okay, and so this is going to be a, a sampling error as opposed to a the model being quite poor. We're not going to go into sampling error in this video. Basically, all we're doing is just saying, okay, if we've run a thousand trials or ten trials or five trials, hey, let's run five trials at each stimulus intensity. All right. How well does our our method of constant stimuli uh, map to the um, the underlying Gaussian function? And as you can see, it's it's not so great. You see, it's sort of it's it's got a big variability there um, between twenty and and one hundred percent correct. Okay. But this is our uh, our model. We are now able to model uh, a Gaussian cumulative distribution function at any mu and at any so at any location so we can put this this Gaussian function anywhere on the x-axis we can change the slope to anything that we want and we can now run a method of constant stimuli psychometric protocol for any numbers of trials we'll set that to 50 now um, and we can see how well the method of constant stimuli um, appears to to follow the the underlying Gaussian model um, yeah, so I'm really happy with this at the moment. Um, we've done what we said we would do, and we've we've built it up from scratch. And so hopefully what you can do now is do things like, well, change the model from a Gaussian to a Gumbel distribution. Change the, the location. So how do we change the location? So where the, the, the X and the, where the X is, oh, sorry, where the mu is of our Gaussian. Well, that's here. So if we set this now down to 25 instead of, 45 let's see can we shift our model does our subject now suddenly map back down to uh, a mu of 25 
yeah, there we go. Look at this. It's we've now leftward shifted it. Let's change. Oh, this will be fun. Let's change the slope. Let's go from ten to say four. Let's make it really steep and let's give them lots of trials. Let's give them say five hundred trials per stimulus intensity. How well can they can they follow these you know suddenly really weird you know um, Gaussian functions? So look at that. That's that's modeling it really quite well. We're using a uniform distribution for that. You know, so play around with it now. I mean, you've now got a mathematical model, and you've got a a, a Python program that can model a psychometric function using uh, a method. Well, it's a, a modified method of constant stimuli. Um, yeah, you've done really well. Let's shift it across to the right. I want to see what happens if we go up to say sixty. So, if we go across to sixty now, what happens? You see, now you can play around with it. You can see what happens. There we go. We'll leave this video here. What's this? Ten minutes in. This last video was really quite easy. We just plotted all the values. Um, yeah, well done. I hope you enjoyed these videos. I hope you understood it, or that you've at least got some idea of how to go about doing some mathematical modeling. We've done a whole lot of Python programming, and um, yeah, um, all the best. And I'll uh, see you in the next videos. All right, catch you later.